In physical security projects, specifically IP video projects, we oftentimes run into the challenge of extending Ethernet over long distances. Usually this means referring to Ethernet being extended over copper. To showcase this, we're, to, we're going to be looking at a product here from Vigitron. The particular product we're looking at here is the Vigitron VI2316. This particular product is a rack mount unit. It also comes in an 8 port configuration and a 4 port configuration. This particular product extends Ethernet up to 3000 feet when 10 base T or 1000 feet when 100, 100 base T. Or actually, I'm sorry, 2100 feet when uh, uh, 100 base T. You can have an optional configuration of four pair or one pair wires, and depending on whether you're using four pair or one pair, may affect the distances in which you can extend Ethernet or power over Ethernet. This particular device is uh, passes PoE through the device, which means if I'm providing PoE uh, power, uh, this device will extend that PoE power to the distance specified by the product. You do not have many configuration options on the device. However, you do need to supply local power. This power can be provided as uh, 12 volts VDC. And in this particular case, I've provided a power unit through a local power supply to power the power of the box. You can also buy an optional power outlet provided by Vigitron. Uh, in addition, you have dip switches on the front. The dip switches allow you to switch from 10 base T to 100 base T and allow you to choose between four pair and one pair depending on the type of connection you have. In this case, I'm providing three inputs into this device. The first input is coming from an Ethernet switch with no PoE. Uh, the second one is, provide, is coming from an Ethernet switch that is supplying PoE. And the third one is coming from an Ethernet connection that is being supplied PoE by a mid-span. To demonstrate that this unit passes through PoE, I want to show you what happens when I connect this with a PoE tester. On the first connection, I'm going to connect in and I'm going to show you that no PoE is being passed through because this is coming from a switch that does not provide PoE power. On the second port, uh, PoE is being passed through and in this particular case is being passed over data because that's a characteristic of a switch providing PoE. The third port is providing PoE over the spare pair of wire, and that's because it is being supplied by a mid-span. Nonetheless, the point, is, the point is very important. You plug your cable coming from your switch or your mid-span into the bottom ports here. Out the top port, you run your cable to the edge wherever you need to run the cable. It is very important that this cable does not go into another hub or switch or to another device other than the head end you want to. So this needs to be a home run straight to where you want the product. I have tested this going into a lightning surge arrestor that you would put into a building entrance terminal and most surge arresters seem to be able to pass the power through that is required. So that is acceptable but do not split this out into another switch or device. It is not acceptable to run a cable from here straight into your camera. You need to run this straight into one of Vigitron's devices. There, these are the two devices that I'm showing you today, the VI2301A or the VI2300A. There's not much of a difference between these products. One of these products is smaller and the other one's uh, this size. The, this one is nice because it's the mini product which might fit inside of a small enclosure if you needed it to. Today I'll be demonstrating using the VI2301A product. Very important, this product does not require local power even though there is a local power connection on this end it does not require local power if you're supplying PoE from the VI2316 product. If you are not providing PoE then you will have to power this device. Vigitron has provided an optional thing when uh, a power connection that you can plug into here and then you can run a two pair wire into a power supply, a 12 volt power supply. Now, uh, very important, do not leave this connected in here if you expect the PoE to work. I noticed that when I had this plugged in, plugged in uh, the power connection would not work. So remove it if, you're not in, if you don't need to use it. However, I recommend in most cases to pass PoE through this device so that you do not have to power this device to the remote end. 
Trying to get low voltage power or a 110 power supply at your camera side may prove to be very difficult. So let me demonstrate how this works. You simply have your connection go into here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to show you first what happens when I have my Ethernet plugged in with no PoE. I'll plug it into the top, and then you plug it into the extended Ethernet side of the device. I'll plug it in like that, and you'll notice that when I plug my camera in, my power light does not light up. That is because I am not providing power to this device over Ethernet. In order for this to function, I would have to power the device with, uh, with a two-pair uh, low-voltage cable connection. Most configurations will require you to provide PoE to the device as well. In this case, I am I'm providing PoE. I'm going to extend that into the 2301A product, and you'll notice that the power light comes on. This is now passing 100 megabits Ethernet and PoE, in this case 802.3AF, to the camera device. As you will notice, the camera device is lit up and it is now powering. That's it. That is, this is how you can use a small, uh, simple device in order to power Ethernet over long extended distances using standard UTP Ethernet cable.